Hello everybody and welcome back to a brand new episode of RF122, my team Cream out here on the channel. Hope you're all having a great day today. We come into this episode with a actual uh, announcement of regulation changes coming into season two of this my team career mode. And you're gonna see on your screen here just a second of what that is actually going to be uh here, as it's going to actually be two departments specifically that are going to be having new regulations, and that's the aerodynamics department as well as the chassis. So we were anticipating these regulation changes. And we have uh, 5 plus 9, so we have 14 parts total here that we need to adapt here across the two departments before the season concludes. Uh, and that is what our full focus is going on for the remainder of the season. We're not worried about upgrading this car specifically uh, for the rest of the season. Although, if we can adapt all of these parts before the season concludes, obviously, we're going to continue to try and develop the car uh, even further from that point on. But uh, Charles Leclerc has a chance here within the next couple of races to win the World Drivers Championship if he can uh, just have things go his way and uh, what better place to kick off this late season push for Leclerc than the Italian GP the home of his second win in Formula One here back in 2019 as we were ready to head to Monza and this is a circuit that I was so uh, concerned for because of the straight line speed that the AI has so actually I went and did the meta I went and put on the 0-0 zero, zero downforce uh, on the front wings there so we're hoping that's going to work out for us here and be what we need. Only one way to find out of course here now is practice was, was going pretty good here now. I was putting up some decent times. So I was pretty comfortable with the car. Monza is not a complicated track. Uh, so it, it's it's just like, uh, I remember in F1 2021 though, I, I went in with that mindset of this is not a complicated track whatsoever and I was actually unbelievably slow on this circuit. So uh, I was keeping that in mind here uh, as we came through to cross the line in these race strategy programs and we're putting up decent numbers here uh, as you can see the overall standings in free practice one we were P8 18 on the board on the medium compound tire nearly a second faster than our teammate of Oscar Piastri now uh, as we head towards qualifying here and actually uh, it was raining in Q1 so we're going to be making a lap here in the light rain on the intermediate compound tire uh, and as you guys know my pace is, hasn't been quite as good when it comes to the wet surface here so I was a little bit concerned about that and just hopeful that we could put up uh, a, a decent result here I wasn't really anticipating making it into Q2 but just want to you know have a nice rebound after the last episode in Zandvoort where we had a promising qualifying, we had a promising start down into turn one, and then I threw it all away myself, which was uh, really embarrassing here now. As you can see, this first overall lap here on the intermediates was decent. Usually, the more laps you run on the intermediate compound tire and qualifying, the faster you get, and that would, uh, sure enough, be the case here in Q1 for myself here now as we were on our second lap, and we were currently dead last year. 22nd place, but we already found about three tenths of a second uh, just through one and two there, corners uh, complete, so and we come through the next chicane here and now we're closing in on already uh, half a second and we're closing in towards a full second by the time we come towards the end of this lap. Seven tenths better here as we come through this uh, final chicane and now eight tenths of a second better. As we came across the line, it was 9 tenths better. We only went P21. We had to run the third and final lap here. This is the last lap that I could run uh, because I was going to probably run out of fuel if we ran one more. But we find another 3 tenths and 1 and 2 through this next uh, second chicane again. And we're going to get another half second. So we're making very uh, similar gains to what we did on that second lap through the final chicane. Though we've already gained about a second there. So even better this time around as we head down into this final turn. This long sweeping right hand. I've got to be so patient uh, on the throttle here. It's so delicate. You see me get a little bit sideways there. Lose a little bit of time, but it's still going to be 1.2 seconds better and it's only going to be P22. We qualify still dead last year in Monza in the wet conditions. You can see we were three tenths of a second off of Albon. I was actually impressed that I was not that terribly far off of Albon, so I was happy about that at least, but uh, obviously going into the actual GP, some work to do. Let's head to the grid in Monza. We're back in Italy once again for another round of the Formula One World Championship. And what a great race is in store for us today, here at the oldest circuit on the calendar, which hosted its first race all the way back in 1922. We're 12 miles northeast of Milan for today's Grand Prix at a Monza circuit where we can expect top speeds of around 215 miles per hour. 11 corners on this 3.6 mile track, with seven of those coming in the form of chicanes. And with a good slipstream and DRS open, there should be plenty of opportunity for some passing here today. Let's run you through the driver grid order for today's exciting race. A fantastic effort from Charles Leclerc yesterday, and it's put him on pole. And the smooth operator, Carlos Sainz, completes the front row. 
Moving on to the rest of the grid, we have Hamilton, Fernando Alonso, Mick Schumacher, and Norris, Bottas, Russell, Perez, and Pierre Gasly. Verstappen, they've taken a grid penalty. Sonoda, Sebastian Vettel, and Ocon. Magnussen, they'll be starting further back after an earlier grid penalty. Stroll, Golden Boy, and Daniel Ricciardo. They've taken a grid penalty. Oscar Piastri, Latifi, Joe, and Alex Albon picks up the last spot on the grid. Which of these talented drivers will come out on top today? It's just about time to go down to the track for the beginning of the race, but before we do, Anthony Davidson, what types of strategy do you think we can expect for today's event? Well, there's a lot that both the driver and the team have to keep in mind when going into a race. Tyres, fuel, energy recovery systems, the list goes on and on. But I think the key to today's victory will come down to the pit stop strategy. Come in too soon and you might find yourself needing more than one stop. Too late and you're putting yourself at a disadvantage by spending longer on worn tyres. Ready to go lights out here in uh, the Italian GP in Monza, one of my uh, favorite circuits and, and just one of the most historic circuits in the world of motorsports here uh, as we were ready to go lights out. So we move up into P17 due to some uh, grid penalties and Oscar Piastri, our teammate as well, actually uh, taking one of those grid penalties, unfortunately for Oscar here as we are ready uh, to go lights out racing here from this Monza race. I'm so excited for this one and hopefully the 0-0 wings are going to work, but we're about to find out either. Uh, the easy way or the hard way here uh, as we grid up to the line and get ready to go. Lights out here now up at the front it's uh, Charlotte Leclerc as well as Carlos signs on that front row with the two Ferrari teammates here as we're going to be. Lights out and we are underway and you can already see a great launch right there from Carlos signs in second position. It's not going to take long. He's already into the front running spot over Charlotte Leclerc as we head down into turn one. They're going to go try and four wide I thought for a second in the background here into the corner they are three wide at least with Russ as well as uh, one of the Alpines of Alonso. Some contact there between Alonso and Schumacher. Not sure if there was any wing damage or not on the Haas, uh, but Schumacher certainly made some contact with the side of Alonso's Alpine. So we'll have to wait and see if it comes into the pit lane at the conclusion of this first lap here. Now, as you can see, everybody heading down into the second chicane, trying to be careful, but the two Red Bulls that took red penalties. Perez, Verstappen trying to make their way forward, and uh, Verstappen knows he really needs to get some crucial points today because Leclerc has a chance to go into Singapore in the next episode if he wins this episode he could lock up the championship as soon as the Singapore Grand Prix uh, if, especially if he wins this Grand Prix which is crazy to think here now as we head down the second long straightaway here comes Leclerc he's going to go around the outside of Sainz there into the chicane it didn't really look like Sainz put up uh, much of a fight maybe knowing uh, what's the sake with the whole championship that we just talked about here now because it was basically like cruise controller right there for uh, Charles Leclerc around the outside of Carlos now uh, as it is sure enough going to be Charles Leclerc coming through to lead this opening lap. He lost the lead on the start, but what a rebound it has been on this uh, second half of a lap for Leclerc. Uh, as you can see in the background, though, you got the Mercedes drivers of Hamilton as well as uh, George Russell uh, running third and fourth place. And then you got the Alpine of Alonso. Schumacher uh, did not come into the pit lane, so he remains on the circuit here alongside Lando Norris. A bit of a lockup right there from the Haas, actually, into turn one. They continue wheel to wheel on the exit of turn two, but it's the Haas, the Schumacher, that's going to come out on top of that battle. But look in the background, the battles that we have going on at the conclusion of this first lap. Wheel to wheel right there. There you can see Verstappen alongside Lance Stroll here now is there. Actually going to have uh, Stroll's teammate of Vettel side by side with K-Mag there just behind as well here. Two rows uh, of side by side racing there into that second chicane and they all managed to, to sort it out here without any major issues there. Not even uh, any contact I don't think here now as we head down uh, through this right hander here and I myself running in P17 still so I didn't lose or really gain anything, which uh, I will take, because there's been some starts this season where we've lost quite a bit. There's been some starts here, not many where we where we have to actually, you know, gain positions here, so uh, I was happy with that, at least breaking even. Now, as you can see, K-Meg and, and Vettel uh, battling side by side again here at the conclusion of the second lap. DRS enabled on lap three, but look at this. We come through a lap later, lap four. No mistakes on my lap, and they pulled away by two seconds. 
I was in shock there at the end of this lap, and I was without the DRS, obviously, uh, nowhere close to being within DRS range here, uh, and I was a little bit concerned, and here comes Alex Albon in it, the Williams, we know this track, this car with the Red Bull powertrains, it doesn't have the most straight line speed, this car is quite a ways down on power, it's quite a ways down on everything here, so I wasn't surprised that I was expecting, honestly, Monza to be uh, one of the more difficult GPs on us this season alongside Spa, as you can see, uh, George Russell actually passing Lewis Hamilton for third place, and then you got Schumacher again going wheel to wheel here uh, with Lando Norris and Vantre Bontas in the Alfa Romeo just in behind but Norris takes the position there as that would actually use the DRS to get back past Alex Albon. Zhou Guan Yu trying to come through as well here as we dive down into turn one way too deep into the corner. Fortunately I was able to salvage the corner uh, and be able to make up for it for the most part and actually still get a decent exit out of turn two but then we are heading down towards that final corner again here on lap six and here comes Albon around the outside actually a little bit of contact there on his uh, right rear wheel and then I come completely messed up the apex here in this final turn. Opens the door for Joe Guan Yu to just cruise by me on the inside and now we are down to 17th place. DRS about to be activated for not only myself but Zhou Guan Yu as well. Albon really has nothing he can do to defend. We're going to go three wide to the left side here. We both clear Albon easily but we're side by side wheel to wheel with uh, Zhou into turn one and we're going to be able to take both of those positions back. So a bit of P15 because some drivers have now made their way into the pit lane here. So so far you know not a terrible turn terrible race we're having here and here comes Joe Guan Yu uh, back on my right side as we approach lap 8 here into this final corner and actually we're pretty dead even here I wasn't even using uh, the overtake button so it's almost like you know what we don't have the worst straight line speed in the world but I just had a really rough final corner right there so we tuck ourselves back in behind Joe uh, unfortunately no DRS for myself this time here because he was actually behind at the DRS uh, detection point so here comes Daniel Ricardo and the McLaren to the left side we're still trying to be wheel to wheel with Joe uh, as we head down into turn 1 though he's going to lock up into turn one. He leaves the door wide open. He's going to run wide into turn two, running over the sausage curb, and pushes myself wide off the circuit into the grass. We lose the spot to Ricardo Latifi Albon as well. Piastri is right on our rear diffuser. Fortunately, he wasn't quite able to get past me, at least for the time being, but as we came through to the next year, right straight away, I had a rough uh, exit, and Piastri was on the move, ready to pounce. He drives by. We drop all the way down to 20th place here now as Perez and Sonoda are behind in the Red Bull and as well in the Alpha Tori. So we got Red Bull powered cars right now. 19th, 20th, 21st, and 22nd here. Now as, oh, we nearly run into the back of Oscar Piastri right there on lap 10. You saw Albon run a little bit wide. Kind of how Joe Guan Yu did as well. Uh, he just didn't run over the curb and turn two and shove a car off the circuit. Uh, unlike what Joe did to us here now. As we get to the left side of Albon though, we cannot, uh, you know, wait around here in this Monza Italian GP. So up the inside of Albon there. We close in real quick on the back of Piastri who actually has a pretty rough uh, chicane. But we get back in front of Albon. Alex Albon here as we run P19. DRS is going to be open as we try to continue to run down Oscar Piastri. I really hope that doesn't we mean what I think it means there is Mark just tells us we're looking into a problem out of the final turn. I'm waiting on what's the update. Is the engine going to expire? Yes, it is. The engine blows on the front straightaway on just lap 11. We didn't even make it halfway in this Grand Prix. And our rough stretch of races is going to continue. Uh, and we are going to be out here in Monza unbelievable. We had a retirement in the last episode. We retired about five laps early uh, due to the damage that we picked up on the car and the crash we had uh, on the first and opening lap and then we eventually went a lap down so we try to save resources while saving the resources or saving the parts of the car I should say. Uh, really hasn't done anything because well they just failed anyways so uh, and now for the second GP and for the third time or second GP in around third time this season overall we have retired from a race and uh, the first one uh, was actually our home Grand Prix of the, uh, Canada and then well in the last episode in, in Zandvoort and now actually our first mechanical failure of the season we've had a lot of mechanical issues but uh, this one actually being our first actual failure uh, and that puts us at a number three here in two in a row like I said Charles Leclerc you can see celebrating with this team he would pick up the victory here uh, in Monza so like I said the same site uh, of his second win overall and back in 2019 uh, well he is able to once again go to the top step of the podium and actually uh, gonna bring his team to Carlos Sainz up there with him as well as George Russell in third place so Leclerc has a chance to win the World Drivers Championship 
in Singapore. That would be so early because even after Singapore, we would have Japan. We would have the United States. We would have Mexico. We got Brazil and Abu Dhabi. He could win at five races remaining on this schedule, which would be uh, pretty pretty crazy here. Uh, but I, I think the odds are certainly stacked in his favor uh, heading into this Singapore GP, which we're going to do in this episode here since we retired uh, from this race before we even got halfway through. So uh, half of the uh, episode down, half of it still remains here as you can see the finishing results on your screen. Unfortunately, Sebastian Vettel would actually retire alongside us there. So P21, P22 for Sebastian Vettel and myself as you see the rest of the order. Our teammate Piastri up there in P18. You know, it's no secret that our car lacks pace and that's exactly what we expected here in this first and opening season. As you can see, Leclerc 130 points ahead of Max Verstappen going into Singapore. Red Bull backed by 171 points. And, uh, you know, when we look at the R&D, this is not surprising. Ferrari has had a nice gap on Red Bull and Mercedes all season long in the R&D. And hopefully these regulation changes that have been finally confirmed are going to be the change that we need to kind of bring Ferrari back a little bit going into next season. Keep Leclerc from dominating. There you see us changing a bunch of engine parts here. We're going to jump straight into qualifying, actually, because uh, practice in Singapore... Just like F1 2021 is is unrealistically difficult to uh, be able to succeed the goals of the practice program. So we come straight through into qualifying here, hoping for a decent qualifying effort. But actually what would happen was uh, I would actually go into Q1 and swap out more parts in the car. So basically I decided to start from the back of the Grand Prix. So uh, actually though, before my lap started in Q1, Max Verstappen not doing himself any favors in the World Drivers' Championship fight. He crashed out in the first Q session, the first qualifying session. Verstappen is out of qualifying here. He will not advance into Q2. His lap originally wasn't even good enough. So we come through now setting our lap here and it really didn't matter what kind of lap we put down. We're starting from the back anyways. One thing to, to note is uh, the R&D or the, the resources on the car and the engine, it's actually been wearing like crazy, crazy quick over the uh, last handful of episodes. So uh, I think I need to stop doing the quick practice programs because it is starting to hurt us late in this season when we keep putting new parts on the engine and we come through though on this final lap here in this final corner and we cross the line and actually we go a relatively competitive 19th place here uh relatively competitive i say here p19 but you can see verstappen is out leclerc charles leclerc is out of q1 as well how about that let's head to the grid for singapore where well, this could be an interesting one here we go then, it's Formula One in Marina Bay once again. And welcome to you all at home who join us today for this fascinating race around the baking hot but beautiful streets of Singapore. The Marina Bay street circuit then has 23 corners, 13 to the left and 10 to the right, taking us a total of 3.1 miles around the landmarks of downtown Singapore. An average lap speed around here, just 107 miles per hour. So with the race not far away from starting, here's what today's grid rundown looks like. George Russell will begin today's event in pole position. Edging out Lando Norris, he'll start from P2. Looking down the rest of the grid, we have Magnussen, Mick Schumacher, Pierre Gasly and Hamilton, Sainz, Perez, Stroll and Max Verstappen, Bottas. They'll be starting further back after an earlier grid penalty. Leclerc, Fernando Alonso, they've taken a grid penalty, and Albon. Ricardo, Ocon, Oscar Piastri, and Sebastian Vettel. Sonoda, they'll be starting further back after an earlier grid penalty. Latifi, Joe, and Golden Boy. It's almost time for those five red lights to go out then. Let's see who can prevail today. Natalie Pinkham joins me once again in the commentary box. It's fantastic to have you with us today. I'm curious though, how do you think the drivers stop those pre-race nerves from becoming overwhelming when you're lining up on the grid? Well, I imagine they'll be starting to feel the adrenaline as they anticipate the rundown into turn one, a bit like preparing to go into battle. The unknown situation will bring nerves, but that's a good thing. It'll keep them focused on the moment and on their surroundings as we build towards the start of the Grand Prix.
Charles Leclerc misses Q2, a prime opportunity for Max Verstappen. What did Verstappen do in that opportunity? He crashed into the barrier. Uh, so he's in the same spot that now Leclerc is in here as we were getting ready uh, to go. Lights out here from Singapore. Uh, and I was I was excited for this one. As you guys know, Singapore is not only my favorite circuit on the F1 calendar. Singapore GP uh, is my favorite circuit in the world. Uh, if I could choose any racetrack to, to visit, if I could only do one, this would be the circuit that I go to. Uh, just such an awesome track here now as we are ready to go. Lights out here. It's a bit of a weird starting grid. Now you got George Russell and Lando Norris. The front row. You got Schumacher and Magnussen there in the top four as well. What a weird grid we have with all the penalties and, and just uh, and the wackiness there as well. Uh, in Q1 with uh, Leclerc and Verstappen having their issues. And suddenly we are in for potentially a upset winner here today. And you look at the top four drivers right now. Uh, as Actually, you see uh, Hamilton side by side with one of the hosses. Uh, that's actually uh, Kevin Magnussen. So uh, you look at least at the top three. None of these drivers have ever won a Grand Prix in Formula 1. George Russell, Lando Norris, uh, Mick Schumacher as well. So with this kind of wackiness with the penalties and the Q1 uh, issue for some of the top drivers in the sport, this opens the door for a potential first-time winner here today in Formula 1, or should I say tonight, under the, under the lights here in the Singapore Grand Prix. Now, as you can see, Valtteri Bontes uh, making his way through now, uh, but it's just crucial to keep our car in one piece here in Singapore. It's so easy uh, to crash your car out of the Singapore Singapore Grand Prix. It's It's got a lot of sections like this right here that are just so tight and, and windy and things can go really wrong really, really quick here. And especially as we come up to this hairpin here, uh, going up and, and through the bridge and whatnot is, is so sketchy as well. Uh, you can easily, easily lose handling of your car and, and completely crash out of the Grand Prix. So you got to be really careful here. You got to be disciplined when it comes to the Singapore Grand Prix. Uh, and I've always loved this circuit so much. Anytime we can race here, like I said, I am down for it now. As you can see, George Russell already extending again to Lando Norris and I don't know how Lando Norris even with the the craziness and penalties how is Lando Norris put a McLaren up there in second position is what I want to know an extremely extremely impressing impressive uh of drive right there from Lando and we'll see what he can do throughout the rest of the Grand Prix what can Lewis Hamilton do Lewis Hamilton uh is currently going on his first season ever without a victory here uh as he's closing in on the final handful of races now as you can actually see Leclerc is going to be side by side oh my goodness Paris has nearly took his front wing right off there into turn one and that could have been a bit of a Red Bull sabotage moment here as we came through to complete this opening lap and uh, we were actually able to beat 20 so we were able to, uh, able to get past both uh, Sebastian Vettel uh, as well as Nicholas Latifi on this opening lap so it was a pretty good opening lap for myself here I was behind Joe Guan Yu uh, but I quickly got stuck behind Joe Guan Yu as well as uh, my teammate of Oscar Piastri because of the straight line speed kind of disadvantage we had it was so difficult to get close enough to be able to make a lunge at the inside of Joe uh, in the Alfa Romeo and, and no one could really close up to each other felt like because Joe he was got an Alfa Romeo which is way faster than a track house Red Bull powered car uh, he couldn't get close enough to Piastri either to be able to make a lunge on him and here I am actually all over the back of Joe here at the right hander but still uh, not quite able to do anything I maybe could have got the elbows up maybe try to go the long way around right there but it, I felt like it was it was only lap 6 of 31 is way too early to do uh, something a little bit too risky here now as you actually see Charles Leclerc uh, on lap 8 into the pit lane put on uh, the medium compound tire that is a scheduled pit stop there uh, as he started on at the soft compound tire. George Russell continues to lead. Lando Norris though is over 5 seconds behind and then Mick Schumacher is over 8 seconds behind the McLaren so uh, that is, is kind of confirming that there's actual pace in the McLaren because uh, Haas is way higher than the McLaren on the R&D for the majority of the season but we follow Zhou Guan Yu into the pit lane here on lap 13 already for our first and only pit stop of the Singapore uh, Grand Prix so we're going to come in, put on that hard compound tire, hope for the best. We've had some errors in the pit lane. Our team struggled and we need to invest into better pit crews uh, because it's certainly bitten us a few times this season and it's going to bite us again because they struggle there uh, to pull that right front wheel off. So uh, we're going to lose a, a good chunk of time. There was a good couple seconds right there that that uh, crew member spent uh, just wiggling that front wheel around hoping for the best and finally he's able to get that thing to come off and we continue back onto the circuit but uh, with a little bit uh, less time in our advantage here. So uh, you can see Zhou Guan Yu nearly three seconds 
seconds ahead here now as we were adapting to those cold tires on the hard compound tire. And as you can see, Leclerc actually after the pit stop cycle had run its course with him and Verstappen. Here he is up the inside and now he's going to have to go around the outside of Verstappen here. Verstappen knows what's at stake. He needs to beat Leclerc and really trying to find a way to win this Grand Prix if he wants to keep this championship alive. But it's not working so far. He's still wheel to wheel. He's not giving up. He's kind of forcing Leclerc into a back out situation just like he does in real life here. It's either you back out or we crash. Verstappen goes wide contact with Leclerc and there was wing damage done to Max Verstappen right there. That would result with Verstappen having to come into the pit lane at the conclusion of the lap and replace that front wing and that could do it right there. Leclerc is moments away here. Well, half a race away still just about from being a world drivers champion here in Formula 1 5 GPs early. We thought Lewis Hamilton clinching the world drivers championship in, uh, you know, USA was, was early. Well, Leclerc might do it before we even get to Japan, which is absolutely uh, insane here now. As you can see, a little bit of a late race update with Russell Norris, Hamilton, Schumacher. Leclerc now is up to fifth, but Leclerc is actually going to have to pit again uh, as he's on that medium compound tire. So you can see Magnussen uh, as well as Bontas, Gasly, Perez, and Alonso the top 10. A bit of a rough night here in Singapore for Alpine. As you can see, Perez was actually battling uh, with the Alpha Doria Pierre Gasly and actually had some contact with Pierre Gasly and more wing damage to a Red Bull. So Perez uh, would have to head into the pit lane as well. And Max Verstappen, after he had replaced his front wing, uh, was all over the back of me. Joe Guan Yu was able to pass our teammate of Oscar Piastri uh, and he was still three seconds down the road. So here I was running down Oscar Piastri here in these next handful of laps. And by the time we come through to the conclusion of lap 19. Here goes Verstappen up the inside into turn one there. There's not much I can do to defend the Red Bull. Perez actually comes out uh, quite a ways behind us. So he shouldn't be a, a threat for the rest of the Grand Prix but Leclerc came out uh, just in front of us after his scheduled pit stop here. So he is going to go to the end of this GP uh, and he's already ahead of Verstappen on the hard compound tires. So, uh, well Verstappen's on the soft compound tire though. That's why you're seeing so much speed from him. And speaking of speed, there it goes up the inside of Piastri here into the braking zone. And Piastri runs wide and actually I noticed some left front wing damage there on Piastri doing a little bit of a switchback on him right there and we're actually going to be able to get past him but where did he pick up that wing damage was my question because I didn't see it before and there was never contact that he made with any of the drivers of Leclerc or Verstappen in that battle now as you can see Bontas able to get past me here uh, on lap 22 into turn 1 so we now drop down to P18 but Perez uh, he was up in the 19th but he was 9.3 seconds back and uh, overall I was happy though with the pace in this car because look at the Williams so of Nicholas Latifi, 11 seconds behind. Williams is better than us on the R&D right now. We're still the bottom uh, of the R&D. So we were putting up a really good performance here. Piastri, as you can imagine, did have to pit after that wing damage. So he was quite a ways behind now. Actually, I think in dead last, unfortunately. Uh, so things got interesting, though, at this moment. I had to go eat dinner while I was recording. Uh, so this right here was the last live clip I got from the video and now we actually have to go into the replay cameras for the rest of these final six laps here of racing because when I got back from eating dinner they were actually fantastic hamburgers by the way I should mention uh I forgot to hit the record button when I was recording the rest of the GP when I came back until I got into the replays and noticed I forgot to hit it and I couldn't believe it. So that was very unfortunate as George Russell, though, is moments away from winning his first Grand Prix in Formula 1. He has a 14.7 second gap over Norris and Hamilton in third. What a what a podium. It's an old British podium actually currently here, but I cannot believe that Lando Norris is up in second while his teammate of Daniel Ricciardo has been struggling all Grand Prix long down in 13th. As you see myself, trying to run down Zhou Guan Yu. The gap hasn't really changed between himself and I. It was 3.2 seconds earlier. It's still hovering around that 3.2 second area. Two laps to go at this point for Russell and he is cruising here now as we have surprisingly not had a single retirement from this race so far. As I say that, there goes our engine. Our engine has blown for the second GP in a row and only two laps remaining in the Singapore GP and there goes our engine. Are you kidding me? I mean, the luck of where the last three races here in the last episode and, and coming into today with Monza in Singapore. Absolute absolute disaster here and I couldn't get any of the post race footage because like I said I forgot to hit the record button. So Charles Leclerc with an 11th place finish gets no points. Norris, Hamilton, Russell up there on the podium but the big thing is Verstappen also does not get points which means Charles Leclerc 
has officially clinched the World Drivers Championship. That is correct. Leclerc is, no matter what, if he finishes last every single race from this point on, and Verstappen or, or Carlos Sainz or something wins every Grand Prix from this point on, it's still going to be a Charles Leclerc as the champion, no matter what. So, I mean, absolute dominant season from Charles Leclerc, and I really can't wait for these regulation changes so we can hopefully see Leclerc get taken down from dominance and uh, and be a little bit more nerfed at least going into season two but uh what a uh, a weird episode a wacky episode with the the mechanical failures in in monza before the halfway point and then we make it to two laps to go here in singapore and we have a failure again you saw williams actually picked up a point there they overtake us on the constructors so we're dead last again uh but we do have uh some parts being adapted on and i'm hopeful that we can adapt all the parts we need to adapt here pretty quick because then we can focus on trying to get a couple more upgrades uh, for the last few Grand Prix of this uh, season. But it's crazy to think we're down already to the final five Grand Prix of this season. It's been an up and down season. We've had high moments. We've had low moments. And this is certainly a low here. We've had, we've had now four uh, DNFs in this season. Three in a row. It's been rough. That's going to do it for me, though. If you guys enjoyed, you know what to do. Hope you enjoyed the pretty lengthy episode. But that is going to do it for me. I'll see you guys next time for the Japanese Grand Prix. Thank you so much for taking your time and your day for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Have a great day, everybody.